on a match day, I do strapping before the game, um, get the boys in for any treatment they need to do, need to have, um, and then get them doing their individual warm up. So if they've got an injury that they're carrying, um, but they're fit to play, you're just getting them doing individual extras before the match to make sure that they're um, warmed up. Any treatment they need before the match, you do that, and then your pitch side, and then it's just an injury review after the game. I think it's, as you say, it's part and parcel of rugby, you, you get on with that, but uh, it's how you recover from that and uh, mentally deal with it. Yeah, I've had my fair share, I've had both my shoulders reconstructed and jaw operation, bits and pieces, but it's, it is tough and it's you can feel down at sometimes. I think Hendry's a good example, he's had to retire recently with his operations, so it is tough as a, you, know, you just want to be out on the pitch all the time, but if you, you, know, you keep smiling, you stay you know, around all the boys all the time, they help you get through all the rehab and stuff. Yeah, as long as you're surrounded by a good bunch of lads like we are here, it's all right. For me, the best thing is to just stay positive, uh, try and look for the the better side of the injury. You know, I've had a, I've had a tough 12 months and you have a bit of a bad time after each injury and then you can get your head around it and you look how you can get better through the injury rather than how long you're out for. Yeah, I uh, after my operation, I had about two and a half, three weeks off to let my uh, actual wound heal, and then I was in, you know, five, six days a week doing weights, off feet conditioning, and just trying to make myself a better player through my injury rather than just stewing around. Yeah, massively, you know, it differs to who's what physio you've got with you as well. So, the moment my ankle, you know, a lot of it blends in with my knee rehab but uh, it's obviously very different for a different area of the body. Um, it was also tailored to you, what you like doing, what you enjoy doing and so yeah it massively differs from player to player, injury to injury. Um, that's just got a few benefits really, if players get injured and they've got some local swelling it's quite good just to help flush that swelling away because that helps the recovery process from an injury point of view. Um, if muscles get tight, then you can obviously ease tension, which will prevent muscle imbalances and create sort of altered biomechanics and the way people move, which can lead to injury as well. And also psychologically, it's the feel-good factor. Players love a rub. Well, basically, I decided to train up to do massage was because I've always wanted to be outside of, uh, after rugby. I've always wanted to be sort of doing something sort of involved in rugby, and I thought. Uh, coaching sort of takes up a lot, a lot of time, just as much as being a player. So I thought be, being a masseuse for a low for a rugby team is actually quite good because you're only working uh, a few hours for the club and that, and then uh, you can do your own sort of work at home and you're working sort of your own time. So I guess just sort of, sort of having a, a, a bit of knowledge and massage, you sort of know what you want, uh, more specific muscles you sort of like. Uh, to be worked on and, uh, and also you can sort of help the uh, masseuse as well sort of work in the areas that you want them to work in. Proprioception's about knowing where your limbs are in space so if somebody uh, say injures their ankle if they don't rehabilitate it properly and don't work on the balance and the proprioception um, then when you're running along your ankle and foot don't quite know where they're supposed to be. So if you get caught in a bit of a compromising position, then your body doesn't tell your brain to correct your ankle position and prevent the injury. So you just roll over on your ankle. So if you don't rehabilitate it properly, I think there's something like a 90% recurrence rate of ankle injuries if you don't rehabilitate them properly and incorporate proprioception into the rehabilitation program. Do a lot on like wobble boards and BOSUs and things like that. I think with young players, they tend, because they're growing at such a rate and they're all over the place, their proprioception is all over the place because the muscles are lengthening, the bones are lengthening, everything's changing. So they're not quite sure where their, their limbs are in space. So it would be difficult to sort of pinpoint one specific injury. Um, there are a few audits as that by bruising, hematomas, dead legs are the most common injury in the Premiership. But it'd be difficult to say, I don't know whether a study's been done. Um, to prevent that, I would say loads of flexibility work, 
um, loads of core stability work and incorporating some proprioception, some balance and coordination work with your lower limbs and with your shoulders as well.